Hi, my name is Daniel Smalley. I've created this video in order to show how the genetic process of transformation takes place inside a bacterial cell. In order to demonstrate this, I'll give a brief tutorial on the process of transformation. This will be followed by a trip to the lab where we'll actually take the plasmid PGLO developed by the company BioRad and incorporate it into a living Escherichia coli cell. If all goes well, our bacterial cell should glow in the dark. The process of glowing is fascinating and it's always exciting to see. So I've asked my pet scorpion, Ophelia, here to show us how it's done. Are you ready, Ophelia? Yeah, yeah that works. Okay. Okay, now we're going to talk about the process of transformation in a bacterial cell. Transformation is when naked genetic information is taken from one donor cell and it's passed on to a recipient cell. This is a really neat thing that happens. It, it happens actually in nature when the cell wall of the donor is lysed. This cell will then swell and its wall will disappear. Once the wall disappears, the DNA is subject to a harsh environment, so it breaks into little tiny fragments. These fragments then are just floating around in space. Now, a unique quality of some types of bacterial cells is called competency. Competency is when the recipient cell can take up these fragmented pieces of DNA and it can attach them to its cell surface. At that point, the, the DNA is broken into half. It no longer has a double helix. It's only a single helix at this point. And it will do this with endonucleases in the, in the cell cytoplasm. These fragmented pieces of DNA can then align along the recipient cell's DNA at a specific point called the aura C. So at the aura C, we have our tiny sequence of DNA from the original donor bacterial cell. Let's just now when the when the recipient cell has this new DNA next to it a protein called RecA helps comes along and it helps integrate this thing into the the new uh, the new recipient cells DNA so we end up with a new sequence here that's half and half half recipient and half donor cell well what happens is that the polymerases it will come along and they'll be synthesizing the recipient cell's DNA yet again and it will come across this new sequence and it will say of course there's an error here so some, sometimes it will come in and it will erase this new information and put back the old recipient cell's info however half of the time it's going to not notice that and it will erase the old cell information and put in an entirely new sequence up here. So when that happens, uh, any of the DNA information from the original cell will be uh, will become part of this new recipient cell. We are now ready to conduct the experiment. You will need to collect several supplies at the beginning. First, label one LB auger plate DNA negative. Next, label one LB ampicillin plate DNA plus, as well as one DNA negative. The last plate is a LB arabinose and ampicillin plate. This should be labeled DNA plus. You will also need a foam microtubule holder, a plastic cup full of ice, and two microtubules, one labeled DNA plus and one labeled DNA negative.
finally you'll need a solution of calcium chloride. Of course, it's always nice to have a smart lab partner. The first step in the experiment is to take 125 microliters of calcium chloride and transfer it into both DNA plus and DNA negative microtubules. The microtube should then be placed on ice for several minutes. Take the E. coli test tube and flame around the lid. Extract 125 microliters of bacteria and flame again to keep it sterile. Release the bacteria into the DNA plus microtube. Then place it back on the ice. This same process should be done for the DNA negative microtube. Take the pegoplasmid and extract 10 microliters. Next, pipette this onto the DNA plus microtube. Make sure that it is the DNA plus tube. You don't want to put it in the DNA negative tube. After this, place it on the foam floaty to prepare it for the brief water bath. Following the water bath, the microtube should briefly be placed on ice to keep them incubated. The next step will be to pipette 125 microliters of LB broth into each of the microtubules. This gives each cell the ability to replicate several times so that Rec-A protein can incorporate the plasmid into its DNA. The final step in the process is to take 125 microliters of the DNA plus solution or DNA negative solution and squirt it onto each of the augers that were previously marked DNA plus or negative. Each of these will be spread over the plate with the glass hockey sticks, stacked upside down, taped, and placed in an incubator for 48 hours at 35 degrees Celsius. If possible, it's always nice to use your school colors just for a good measure of good luck. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, go KU! <laughs> it's now time to examine the plates. The LB DNA negative plate showed confluent growth. The DNA plus LB ampicillin plate showed growth, but no GFP. Finally, the DNA plus LB ampicillin arabinose was an excellent result.